April 1st, 1997. Seattle, the United States of America. Boeing's newest jetliner, the B777, is being prepared for the ultimate test of any long distance aircraft. An attempt at not one, but two world records. We wanted to get the distance record, and we knew the airplane had the performance, so we found the right day to do it to, to match the uh, Malaysian 50th anniversary. And it was only the third flight for this airplane. I think when we left Seattle, the airplane had only five hours of flight. But when the day came, we just filled it up with gas and uh, took off and, uh, and wound up in uh, Kuala Lumpur 21 hours later. The only time that uh, there was a little bit of a suspense uh, as to whether this was go or no go was when we got over eastern United States. And that's a critical point where you get assigned an altitude over the Atlantic. So we were cleared to 37,000 feet, which made it much easier. If they had kept us down to a lower altitude, we, had, we would have burned a lot more fuel. The B777 Super Ranger lands in Kuala Lumpur after its 20,000 kilometer trip. The other part of the record is the total time that you spend going around the world and which means that you have to minimize the time on the ground as well, like a pit stop. As the Malaysian ground crew work on their new aircraft, the media interview the pilots. Malaysia Airlines Executive Chairman Tan Sri Tajuddin Ramli greets the dignitaries. This is a proud moment for Tan Sri Tajuddin Ramli as the record flight coincides with Malaysia Airlines 50th anniversary and the B777 is set to become the cornerstone of Malaysia Airlines extended service program well into the next century. The airplane was fully equipped. It was a uh, regular airplane with full complement of seats. And every telephone on the, on the airplane worked. 278 telephones. You could pick any one of them and they all worked. The ground crews did a fantastic job getting that airplane refueled in record time. And we were out of there in less than two hours. Kuala Lumpur. I was guessing would be three hours or, or longer, and that really helped us. It was a good, a good effort on everybody's part there. And so the Super Ranger takes off on its trip back to Seattle, chasing its second world record. back to Seattle, we, we flew down south towards Indonesia and we came up again to the islands of Guam and direct to Seattle. To be able to find an aeroplane in 42 hours circumnavigating the whole world in the Tropic of Cancer, to me it was very interesting and something for me to remember the rest of my life. 42 hours after departing, the B777 receives a hero's welcome back in Seattle.
great, uh, great experience. Forty less than 42 hours, and we beat the previous record by more than six hours. Now I want to tell you one other thing that most of you probably don't know. A week ago, at this very moment, this airplane had never yet flown. The world record B777 was almost straight off the assembly line with no extra long-range provisions. So what was the rationale behind producing a two-engine passenger aircraft that can fly around the world with only one stop? So we basically did start with a clean sheet of paper. We looked at our processes, our tools, our people, and how we build airplanes in the past and how we wanted to build them in the future. The Boeing Company has been building aircraft since its founding in 1916. They have always been at the forefront of aviation, from building early seaplanes and mail delivery aircraft through World War I fighters. The first metal plane with a retractable undercarriage. The world's first passenger aircraft, the Model 247. And the groundbreaking 707 passenger jet. Boeing has become the world's largest producer of commercial jetliners. One takes off somewhere in the world every three and a half seconds. You know, we noticed and the airlines told us that there is a gap between a 767 300, which is 210 seats in three class, and a 747 400, which is 420, 430 seats. To cover that gap, 6-7 and the 4-7, we found that the right thing to do was to put an airplane in that same category. We were starting from scratch with a brand new airplane. That's a, a huge difference from maybe a derivative development program. Uh, in, in the case of the 777, we had a chance to start with a clean sheet of paper. The B-777 was conceived to meet the changing needs of the aviation market. No other aviation company has such a globally acknowledged reputation. But Boeing also knew they had to come up with a radical new way of designing and building aircraft to keep them at the forefront of the industry. We had a theme for the program called the Working Together theme. And what that meant was our suppliers ourselves and our airline customers uh, were going to work close, closer than ever before. And so we in, in, intentionally brought customers together and uh, communicated with them on what our intentions were for this program. We had pilots from the other airlines involved. We identified a group of core airlines that we were going to sell the airplane to that when we invited them to sit on our uh, PDTs, our development teams, and they helped us design the airplane too. They heard each other's thoughts and we heard all of them collectively, so it was really a faster process. And in the end, I think we got a much superior product.